Hey everybody, Edo here, and I want to give you an overview of how to play Skulk Hollow. Skulk Hollow is live on Kickstarter now, and a two-player asymmetric tactics combat game. One player is a gigantic guardian, one of a couple different guardians you can play as, and the other is a band of fox and heroes. It is a one versus many, sort of Shadow of the Colossus, Mouse Guard combination. It's fantastic. Keith Mateka designed it, did a fabulous job. Dustin Faust on the art, uh, and I did the development. Incredible meeples by Helen uh, Zhu. And so let's get right to it and flip this camera around. This is the Skulk Hollow overview of how to play. And as I said, one player is going to be playing as a gigantic guardian and the other the fox and hero so the one player is going to pick from the fox and heroes and choose their noble to start with i'll show that in a second but the other is going to pick from one of the many guardians we have grac raptra tanthos and uh stretch goal is apoda now each of these comes with their own giant Creature board, these are going to be uh, die cut, so they're the shape of the creature, uh, not so much gray or tan, uh, and so they each come with that. They come with their uh, reference card and the creature board, so uh, tons of stuff for each of the different guardians. Uh, Poda, as I mentioned, is a stretch goal, but we, we really want to unlock a Poda because a Poda is awesome, as are the other ones. So, uh, for the purpose of this overview, we are going to use Grack. Uh, we will set aside the other guardians for another time. But that doesn't mean that the Foxen hero doesn't have a decision to make as well. They do. So on the Foxen side, Foxen has to decide between the king, the prince, the queen, and the princess, all of these different nobles have different unique abilities and weightings, and they dramatically change how you play the fox and players. But I will pick the king of war to start and set him out. And we will also, so then we'll take the other ones and we'll set them aside. They will not be used this game. And then we will also grab the sentinel who's here. So the fox and player will have their player board start with one noble out and the sentinel out. And I'll talk about all this more. And then those cre uh, characters will be summoned into the world, into this square. And actually, I have this just to, so you can see it'll, it'll be better. This is for advanced play. This one will be for new players. So you can see the different squares more clearly on the board. So we'll put these guys back and um, also, each uh, character has a, um, each, you know, group has their own reference card. This is handed to the other player, so they know the abilities and special abilities for their opponent. We don't need these out here either. I'll just talk about it. But again, just useful for players. So, uh, Poda, ha uh, Grack has one, Tantos, all the characters have one. Uh, so, <clears throat> on the fox inside, you'll start with this setup, your chosen noble, your sentinel, their two units in the keep square, and then you'll have other resources, your other foxes out, and the, you know, the heart and, and power tokens available. And you'll shuffle these, your deck, because this deck is not properly shuffled, but that's okay. We'll set it aside, and you will have your deck over there. And then on the guardian side, you bring out your guardian board, obviously. You'll have your guardian starting on the lair. Uh, Tantho starts with a, a tentacle out, but just with Gracky starting in the lair. And then you have your player board uh, as well as your cards, your, play, your, your hand. And these get shuffled as well. And then in the case of Grack, he has a win condition. We'll have our own special uh, token for this, but for now, he has a special win condition and we'll set that meter at zero. Again, these are all Game Crafter prototypes, so everything will look better uh, and the sizing will be a little bit different uh, and the die cut on the Grack board. So this is your basic starting setup. On the Fox side, the only difference here would be you'd have a different Noble. On the Creature side, you're going to have a, a different Guardian, a different deck, a different uh, playmat. But 
We'll set that aside and, and keep on moving. Both players are going to start with a hand. Now, it happens to be the case that for the fox, uh, fox and Heroes, you start with five cards, as well as for Grack, you start with five cards. However, see if I can get that to come in. However, trust me, that's a five. Uh, however, different guardians might have smaller hands, like four. So again, we're going to have these cards shuffled. So we'll have five cards in our hand. And then on Grack's side, you will do the same, because he has five cards as well. Okay, so both players are going to start with their hands. And you'll also notice there is an icon for action. And in this case, foxes have three actions, and Grack has two actions. Um, Grack also has a special ability where at the end of the game when he's about to die, he'll gain another action, but we'll get to that in a second. That is the basic setup. Let's take a moment to talk about win conditions. The win condition for the Foxen is pretty straightforward. There's this big, gigantic guardian. The foxes need to traverse said guardian's body. Oot, oot, oot. And we'll talk about how they do that to knock out all of the guardian's hit points. As you do that, we will apply hearts of damage to said uh, locations, and when it's completely uh, full, Guardian's been thwarted. So, and that's how the Foxen player will win. The Guardian, on the other hand, has two win conditions. The first win condition is if the Guardian takes out the Noble. So if, as a player, I'm able to, in the case of the King of War, deal three damage to the King of War, then the Guardian wins. And then also, each Guardian has their own unique win condition. In the case of Grack, if Grack uh, defeats eight other Foxen characters, so not, not the uh, King of War, but the Sentinel or the Archer or whomever, uh, he will win as well. So you have to think about both of those conditions as you're playing. Now let's talk about abilities and how the characters work. I actually like to start with Grack. He's a great starting guardian because he's relatively simple. In the deck, Grack has a series of dual use cards or uh, single more powerful cards. The way Skulk Hollow works is you may use an action to use one of the two abilities. You don't use both. You pick, in this case, whether I want to move or use gaze, swing or move. Sometimes it's you know, stomp or swing, and I'm going to use the, uh, one of those abilities per action. So with Grack, I only get two actions. That is not a lot. So I can only, um, again, play one card and then another card. So uh, this wasn't my hand, though. <laughs> so I will have my hand. Oh, look. Okay, let's go. And I can use my different card. So let's talk about movement for a sec. Movement works the same for both players. The way movement works is you are going to line up the diamond with the diamond in front of you for your play, and then you are able to move as shown on the card. So in this case, I can move diagonal forward, diagonal back, right and left. For the case of um, slant left, this is sort of left diagonal. For the case of flank right, I move to the right. So you always, the easiest way to do it is you just orient it to the board and move in the appropriate direction. So movement's pretty simple. You get to move one spot in the appropriate direction to work towards thwarting your enemies or Grack being mean. Um, otherwise, with Grack, aside from the movement, you have Grack's abilities. So let's just talk about Grack's abilities for a second. One, anyway, so one of his abilities is swing. If Grack is in a tile with, let's bring the Sentinel over, if Grack is in a tile with any Foxen character uh, and he uses Swing, he does one damage to said character. So that Sentinel has two hit points, one down, one to go. Uh, Grack may select any of the characters in the spot with him to hit. Um, I will go, go into it more later, but the only exception is the king 
it gets protected by anyone banded or in the same square as the king. So Grac can't target the king if other people are around, but Swing targets somebody in the same spot as Grac. He swings down and knocks him for a shot. Grac is also possessed and has this magic coursing through his vein, and he has Gaze. What Gaze allows Grac to do, let's bring out an archer here. Um, one of the things you'll notice, or Rogue in fact, is that each of these characters has a um, specific meeple and icon associated with it. So in this case, this is the rogue with the circle on his chest. So that's very specifically this rogue. So say this rogue's out, and every time something somebody summoned, we'll put their card out. A little constrained for space here, but um, this is a you know medium-sized deck uh, a table. Uh, in that you have the main board and the, the Grack board. But in front of you as a player, you just had to have this little tableau. But so I, if I had that fox out, what Grack can do is gaze, and gaze allows him to shoot in, into any of these orthogonal adjacent spots. Um, and so for the purpose of this, he would do one damage to the rogue, and the rogue would be destroyed. So in doing that, play a gaze card, do the damage, that's in action. We've talk, we spoke about swing, we spoke about uh, gaze, let's talk about Stomp. Stomp allows Grack to, in the space that he is, if he stomps, he can take all of the foxen within that space and put them anywhere he wants. You're gonna get blasted, they get just thrown around everywhere. And so you can use this to split forces, you can use this to say, set up a gaze, I stomp, knock the rogue there, then I gaze, that kind of thing. And it is a whole lot of fun. Uh, Grack has two more abilities. One is throw. As the game progresses, and as the foxes start bouncing around and are on top of Grack, Grack gets angry, and Grack will want to throw them to the ground. So when he does that, he can throw them to any spot, so you can throw some guy to your feet and swing at him. You can uh, throw him across the, the, the hall, all sort, or the, the world, all sorts of things to use it. Now, super important, with the Guardian. If the fox and characters has taken out a area on his body, let's say, for example, they have taken out Throw, Grack no longer can use that ability. It's one of the reasons uh, Prepare is important, which I'll talk about, as is the dual action cards, because I may not be able to use my Throw ability in this circumstance. Um, Grek does, in fact, though, have a Mend ability, which will heal hit points. So at no point can you permanently disable Grek. You need to overpower him as he continues to rage. Uh, I mentioned Mend, which is heal any part of his body. Again, that's uh, off of a card uh, with the Mend icon. This one is a Mend and Draw 1 card. I'm sorry about the focus here, but we'll have to live with it. And... Um, you then have the prepare ability. Now, actually, both players have the prepare ability, and that's where, for an action, you discard one card uh, and draw two. So if you don't like what you have, you want to cycle a little bit, you want to do that things, you can use an action to discard a card and draw two. Um, and that uh, brings us to sort of the, the final little rule set here is at the end of your turn, and this is true for both, if you have fewer than your hand limit, you draw up to your hand limit. So if Grack ends with just two cards in his hand, he draws up to five, because his hand limit is five. If I've got one card, I draw up to five. If I've got four cards, I draw up to five. However, if you were at or above your hand limit, which is possible, and it's, I'm using the word limit, but it's hand size, because you, you can have unlimited number of cards. Um, but if you're at five or above, you still draw one card at the end of your turn. So you're always gonna, at a minimum, get one new card at the end of your turn, and it'll and you can have a bigger hand of cards. So if you're stuck or positioned wrong, or you just want to prepare, you can sort of flood your hand and then take your key actions the following round. Grack's special ability is that if he has nine damage on his body, that's all but two to being killed, he rages and gets a third action. And until you've played Grack with a third action, you have no idea. You're like, you're playing the whole game with two and then with three and suddenly you're like stepping, throwing, swinging, like it's pretty rad. So 
That's the basis on how you play Grack. He's the juggernaut walk slam character. He's a good start. Um, he has a, we give him a one star rating for the most, he's not, he's, he's just as good as everybody else, but he's the easiest to learn from the guardian side and, and from the fox inside. Tanthos has the different tentacles, rapture flies, like uh, Apodic and Burrow and has like weird abilities. So like all of the different characters and guardians function differently. Um, but it's, you know, uh, he's a good start one. I'd always recommend starting to learn with Grack. So that's Grack. He's going to come bustling along. So for the Foxen player, as I mentioned, you start with those two starting units every time. And you then have dual action cards like Grack, like the other players, and some, some single action, but they function the same way. If there's two, you pick one or the other. They all cost an action. It's exactly like playing Grack. The Foxens have three actions, though, by the way. However, foxes also have unit cards. With the unit card, you, uh, it takes an action, you play it to the table, you look up which unit that is, uh, and then you can summon it into the town area or the keep. So uh, you're able to start units here, here, or here. The only exception is if Grack is in one, you can't summon in there. You have to summon to a different one. Um, so that's how summoning works. When uh, foxes, uh, fox, Fox and characters are defeated, uh, with the exception of the king, which will end the game. Everyone else is put into the discard pile and then eventually reshuffled back in. So you do have an unlimited number of foxes, uh, except in the case of Grack, if he kills a bunch of them, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, but that's how you're summoning different units into, into the game. Now, with the Foxen, while there are these different ability cards, all of the units have their own function, purpose, and use. So I'm going to go over the basic actions that many of them have, and then I'll go through each of them specifically. So there is a ranged attack, a missile attack. Let's find a card with it. There we go, the little bow, right? So when I use this, if I'm, if I'm playing with... Um, a character that can use a missile attack, the archer or the sentinel, I'll talk about it specifically for them, but you are able to target from the map any location on Grack. So an archer can be shooting Grack in the eye, longbow style, or in the arm. So you can do damage to Grack with the missile attack even though you're not on him. The next ability is a leap. Leap, this is a, a double leap, but just a single leap would be duh, duh, duh that leap will allow a fox in the same spot as Grack. Uh, this is a bad example because it is the archer who does not have the leap ability, but the rogue to jump up onto Grack. And leap allows you to traverse around Grack. Again, there are a couple special abilities, but generally units have to follow the different paths across Grack's body. This is a little bit of a, a puzzle map because other creatures have other uh, layouts, other choke points. You can only have a certain amount of foxes in any given location. How you play this map uh, is really dynamic and connected to the guardian you're playing with. But so Leap allows you to move around and, and, and jump onto the guardian uh, and off for what it's worth. And then you have Melee. Melee is the cross swords, duh, 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 uh, which Melee which is what allows you to strike at the location you are on on the Guardian. So if I have a Knight here, he can strike here and put a wound there. So those are the core abilities. Um, I want to talk about one more, and then I'll go through each unit, which is power. So Foxen and some other Guardians that are not Grack have the ability to generate power as an action. So it's a dual purpose card. I'm only gonna pick one of the two. If I pick this, I'll, I'll generate two power. Power, when generated, is stored in your pool, and this will be bigger in the bigger player mat uh, down here. Effectively, what this is meant to do is at the end of your turn, after you finished, this power is then distributed to any units that 
can use power. So the sentinel can use power on that little square. The king of war can use power. Power is amazing. What power lets you do is on subsequent turns, if a unit has a power cube on it, they can spend a power cube for a free action of any that are available to them, whether it's, you know, in the Sentinel's case, he has melee, uh, uh, missile, and leap. You can use any of your abilities or move one spot in any direction. So it's like a free m movement or a ability on any character, and it really is what gives Fox in particular, Fox in the ability to sort of move in mass. Because generally speaking, when the Fox in have three actions, I've got to distribute them between all my characters, but if a character has power on it, they can use it as a free action. So uh, I can leap, strike with melee, use a missile attack, or generate power. As in, as also, as I mentioned, Fox in have move abilities like I explained um, for with Grack, gain ground. Any direction, this is a good one. Okay, so let us talk about the specific Foxen units. Well, the King of War, he is just the starter king, the guy you're gonna, you know, you, he's your go-to in that he's got the uh, three hit points, two power. I can get this to focus again. Three hit points, two power, and um, is just hard to hard to deal with in of itself. He doesn't have an amazing special ability like the others do, um, but it, he's still pretty awesome. The queen can heal units, the princess can command other units to get free actions, and the prince can take cards from the graveyard. So it's pretty crazy. But in his case, he's just got a lot of hit points and a lot of power. Now, the one ability he does always, and all nobles do, uh, is that if there are other units in the spot with him, he, they can't be, uh, he can't be attacked until they've been taken care of. So let's talk about the knight. The knight here is a go-to character. In the knight's case, you have two hit points and the special ability that when you leap onto, or when you walk into a spot with the, the guardian, you get a free leap up onto the guardian's lowest entry point. When you enter a garden, it's a little bit different for the different guardians, but you need to come in at the lowest point. And the knight gets a bonus leap action, or not leap, just bonus leap, when walking into a spot with the Guardian. And all these little abilities are listed. There's just one per, and they're listed at the bottom. So that's the Knight. In the case of the Sentinel, Sentinel has two hit points, Sentinel has a power, and if the Sentinel is in the same square as the Guardian and uses the missile attack, he can throw his jab, uh, javelin up at the Guardian and hit any spot super useful, that's why he's the sort of protector of the king, if you will. Then we have the archer. Uh, this archer uh, wears cloth, so pretty, pretty weak on the hit point side of things, only a single hit point, but the archer can fire an arrow from into any adjacent spot if the guardian's there and take out uh, any abilities because it's a missile attack. Uh, this, gar this archer is no Legolas. Uh, she cannot jump up and traverse the uh, guardian. The archers are longbow archers. Keep them away. Fire at the fire at the guardian. You'll be going. You'll be taking uh, the knight onto the guardian. Sometimes the king or the prince or the princess and, or the or the queen. Uh, and the last uh, character is the rogue. Rogue's also wearing flimsy cloth, so only a single hit point. Rogue has two ability spots, power spots, which is awesome, but the Rogue's special ability allows the Rogue to leap from the ground space with the Guardian, but leap to any location on the Guardian and from any location to the Guardian to any other. So, like, you get a Rogue on the Guardian, and he's bouncing around, and the Guardian's like, Aah! Anyway, Grek, Grek not happy. So, those are the fundamentals. Like, again, what is so amazing about Skulk Hollow is the dynamics and tactics that evolve and come through play as different players are trying to do different things on the, on the board, as, as the units move around and they're jumping on and hit points and where are you gonna attack and are you gonna, you gonna try to get your creatures up onto Grack and break the take out, take out throw? Are you gonna think about, you know, leaping on but taking out swing or, or is, is he using gaze and you wanna take out gaze? All of those different things have a huge impact on play and approach. Each guardian requires a different amount of play. As I mentioned, you have the other, the other uh, nobles. They also have a huge impact to how you play 
as I mentioned, the Prince of Guile uh, can spend a power to draw any card from the discard pile, including units. <laughs> um, the Queen can heal, uh, which is awesome, and the Princess can command other units, spend power to uh, give a, an archer another shot, or that kind of thing. So, um, really changes how you play. A lot of, comes into which Guardian was selected, which, um, which Noble was selected, and the styles of the Duke players. And then, you know, we just have all of the other Guardians, which I mentioned. Again, just quickly, you have Tanthos. Tanthos, uh, here's the board with the different abilities on the other side here, but Tanthos is a um, root creature, and, da -da -da -da, and Tanthos can win by either um, killing the king or bringing each and every one of its tentacles into the world, the roots into the world, uh, which is awesome. You have uh, the abilities around tentacles grabbing things and roots grabbing things and pulling and, and shocking, and he's super rad. Then you also have Raptra. Raptra has two modes. Raptra has flying uh, in the air and on the ground, has a shriek a track, a claw track. You can use flap to move creatures around the board. Um, getting up onto Raptra is a challenge. Uh, if you can't do it when he's in the air, you gotta bring him down. Super cool flying character. And then, as I mentioned, stretch goal, hopeful, hopeful, we have Apoda, who is awesome. And Apoda has a burrow ability and can sort of burrow around the board to win or just take it out, uh, you know, take out the king. But with him, his it, it, traversing his board is really difficult as he can do damage to all these locations so getting your creatures and trying to manage him is tough you'll want to like try it with the archers but then he's moving too quick and going underground and burrowing like super cool so let's get a poda anyway this was the quick but hopefully helpful skulk hollow overview